Hello and welcome to this demonstration in which I'm going to show you how you can design this St. Patrick's Day sign using Arkham Express 2015 R2. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up Arkham Express and as you can see on the right hand side of my screen I've got two modules installed, the Advanced Studio Machining and the Smart Engraving one. I'm going to show you later on how to use them and I'm going to explain the benefits. So first things first, I need to open an image I've downloaded off the internet. It's just a clover. So what I need is to retrace the outer shape of my clover. Now I could do that by creating polylines, but I'm going to do it in a much quicker way using the bitmap to vector tool. So the first thing I need to do is to reduce the number of colors. So if I click on this, we've got 255 colors in the image at the moment, but we only really need two, like this. So I'm going to click on OK, and after having made sure that my primary color is set to my green, I can click on Create and close the form. Now if I make my JPEG invisible, you can see I've got my clover vector. Now I want my stem vector to be a bit narrower so I'm going to click on it, enter node editing mode, and I'm going to select the right hand side nodes, hold my alt key down and click on my left arrow key. So that will open up the nudge distance menu. So now I can set the distance that my nodes will be moved by every single time I click on any arrow key. So I'm gonna say 10 millimeters, click on OK, and now click twice more so the nodes have been moved by 30 millimeters in total I'm going to do the same with these nodes so move them towards the right by 30 millimeters and once I'm happy with these I can close the form and export my vector so I can select it go vectors export and call these clover vector click on save and now I can close my model down without saving my changes as I don't really need to save them as I've already exported the vector so I can now create my new model I want it to be 400 millimeters high and 500 millimeters wide with my resolution as high as possible and the origin in the center of the model So here is my model in the 2D view and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a rectangle. So I want this rectangle to be 450 millimeters wide and 350 millimeters high. I also want to add a corner radius of 30 millimeters. If I click on create, I can close the form and start to play with this shape a bit. So if I select my vector, I can now enter node editing mode, insert a mid node on this span and this span as well, so right click and insert a mid node and the same on this one. Then I can make them smooth, so while I hover with the mouse over the vector I can click on S on my keyboard. And then I can select this node and move it downwards by 20 millimeters, so if we Remember, we have set the nudge distance to 10, so I will have to click on my downwards arrow key twice. And for this node, twice on the upwards one. I can close the form, and if I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to offset it. So I can select my vector, enter the offset tool, and offset this by 15 millimeters outwards with radius corners and I do not want to delete my original vectors. So if I click on offset I can close the form and see the result. So I'm now going to create two construction lines which are going to be spans of a circle. So I'm going to create the first one it's gonna be a circle centered in 0, 150 
with a 260 millimeters radius. You can click on create and without closing the form I'm going to create another one centered in 0 minus 150 with a 270 millimeter radius. I can click on create and close the form. I can now select these two vectors and as I only really need this part I can use my explode vectors tool and then get rid of the parts I don't need. So I can now reselect these two vectors and I don't want them to be joined but what I want is to transform them because I want them a bit less wide. So I want the width to be 400 millimeters and please make sure that you're maintaining the aspect ratio so the height is automatically calculated. Click on apply and close this down. So I'm happy with this. The next thing I'm going to do is to import the vector I've previously created. Now it's very big so we need to transform it and I want to maintain the aspect ratio again and I want to resize the width to be 40 millimeters. And then I'm going to center this in my model by clicking on this icon here. And I'm going to close the form. Now I want to create some vectors that will resemble veinings for my clover. So I'm going to enter the create polyline tool and I want to draw smooth polylines and I'm just going to draw some vectors that resemble some veinings. Like so. Now I can modify them, I can click on them, enter node editing mode and delete for example this node over here. I'm just going to hover over the node with the mouse and click on D on my keyboard and then I'm going to make this node smooth. So hovering and click on S on my keyboard. Same on this one. So I'm going to delete this node and make this node smooth. So once I'm happy with the result, I can select my veinings and offset them. I want them to be offset by 0.2 of a millimeter, both sides, with sharp corners, and this time I want to delete my original vector. So I can click on offset, and this is the shape I will have. I'm happy with this, so I can close the form, and I can start to create the pattern. So I'm going to select drag in a box, both the clover and the veinings. I'm going to group them together, so Ctrl G on my keyboard. And then I'm going to shift select the top span and enter my paste along a curve tool. So I want eight copies. I'm going to click on paste and they appear on my span. So I can now select them, they will be automatically grouped together and I want to move them upwards by 20 millimeters. So two clicks on my upwards arrow key. I now want to create a pattern for the bottom span, but I only want six copies. So I'm going to select my clover and my veinings, shift select my span, paste along the curve tool and select six copies this time. Click on paste, close the form and as you can see my vectors overlap. Now first things first I'm going to delete the two spans I don't need anymore and my original clover. I can now select these grouped vectors and move them downwards. So as you've seen this time I've moved them by 30 millimeters so three clicks on my arrow key and if I'm happy with the result, I can now create the text vector, which is the last thing I need to do. So you can choose the font you like, I'm just going to go for Cooper Black, 30 millimeters in size, and with a 10% character spacing. So I'm going to click anywhere on my model and type Happy St. Patrick's Day. Click on create and center these 
in my model by clicking on this icon here. So once I'm happy with the result, the last thing I need to do is to ungroup my clovers and my veinings. So shift select the two groups, right click and ungroup all, and then select the clovers and group them together, and then the veinings and group them together. So, now I'm done with this, I can switch to my 3D view and start to select my toolpaths. So the first one is a profiling toolpath. So I'm going to select my outer rectangle, click on toolpaths and select a profiling strategy. So I want to profile along the selected vectors. First of all, I'm going to select my block to be 30 mm thick with the material Z0 and the model positioning material to be on top of my block. I'm going to select a finish depth of 30 mm because I want to cut all the way through and I'm going to choose a 6 mm end mill as my profiling tool. Now I want to add bridges and I'm going to add a constant number of 4 3D bridges with a length of 10 mm and a thickness of 7. I'm going to click on add and they appear on my screen. Now in case I'm not happy with where they are I can always edit their position but I'm happy with this so I'm going to click on calculate now and as you can see the toolpath is calculated keeping into account the bridges position. I can now create the other two toolpaths I need. So I'm going to select the inner rectangle, the clovers and the text vector to create a 2D area clearance toolpath. Now I want to machine selected vectors with a finish depth of 12 mm and I'm going to add more than one tool to my list. Now this would have not been possible unless you have the advanced 2D machining module installed on your computer. Same goes for the bridges. I could have not added bridges unless I have my advanced 2D machining module installed. You can only add one bridge which is added by default to the start point of your vector. So in this case I'm going to add three tools. So a 10 mm end mill, a 5 mm end mill and a 1.5 mm end mill. One to rough the part out, one to semi finish it and one to finish it. I also want to change the machining style offset for my 5 and my 1.5 mm end mill. I can now click on calculate now and Arkham will calculate the three strategies. So if I close the form down you can see them individually. So that is my 10 mm one. That is my 5 mm and that is my 1.5 mm end mill strategy. So if I'm happy with this, the last thing I want to do is to engrave these veinings. So I'm going to select these group vectors, select a smart engraving toolpath. So I want a finish depth of 4 mm and I just want to add one tool this time, but again you have the chance to add more than one. And I want to do corner sharpening. So I can click on calculate now, close the form and once I'm happy with this I can simulate my three strategies. So if I simulate the profiling one first you can see that the part is cut out and my bridges are there. I can now simulate individually the area clearance strategies. So first you can see that there is a lot of material left so we semi finish the part. There's still some bits, so we finish it with a 1.5 mm end mill. And our part is ready. And finally, I'm going to zoom on a clover so you can see the smart engraving toolpath being simulated, like so. 
Remember, you can always improve the appearance of your simulation by clicking on simulation and change the material. I'm going to change this to medium oak, where the H stands for the veinings being oriented horizontally. And if I'm happy with the simulation, I can now export my toolpaths by going toolpaths, save toolpath as, and choose my preferred directory, my file name, my machine file format, I'm just going to go for a standard G code in millimeters, and I also want to save my toolpaths to separate files, assuming I don't have an automatic tool changer, and I want to append the toolpath details to the file names. So I'm going to click on save, and if I now go to my folder, I've got five different tab files, which I can edit with Notepad++, and check out. So, this concludes my demonstration, in which I've showed you how you can design this St. Patrick's Day wooden sign using Arkham Express 2015 R2 with the advanced studio machining and smart engraving modules installed. Thank you for watching.